Charlotte and this is Time Hammer Trust to Read. Um, Apologise for the beautiful background and the slightly extreme close up, but needs must. And I'm filming <laughs> with every moment that I can spare. So um, I'm going to talk to you about some of the books I've read in January. Um, I've read, I've had a really good reading month, so I'm going to do two videos, and this is the first of the two. So I opened up January with The Hunting Party. I'm not sure which side to hold this on. I think this side, maybe. The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. And I did mention that um, it maybe wasn't going to be a me book, but that I'd kind of felt it was New Year's-y. It's set at New Year's. It's in a hunting lodge deep in the Scottish wilderness. And a group of old friends gather for New Year. And then I sort of presumed that they'd start getting killed off. Uh, this was not a Charlotte book. <laughs> this was... And, and I did read it and I kind of hate read it, which can be fun. And if Lucy Foley hadn't already made, obviously, quite a success of this, I wouldn't give a bad review. I try not to give bad reviews for books. I just, if I read something and I don't like it, I tend to not review it rather than bad review it. And I, and I certainly wouldn't put it on Instagram where it's like there forever on my grid. But the chances of Lucy Foley tuning into this video are pretty slim. And I also kind of feel like some of the observations are teeny bit funny so for what it is it's it does what it says on the tin and i'm sure loads of people have really enjoyed it and loads of big writers have really enjoyed it you know, in the thriller genre so who am i to judge i'm not really a reader of thrillers but i've got to branch out i don't want to just stick to what i know and when loads of people are telling me that a book is good i kind of want to listen so i'm not i'm not going to stop every now and then branching out and trying something different um this yeah Basically, for me, it all started to fall down when I realised that the group of friends were all quite posh. They'd all get, bring, been to like Oxbridge, you know, either, I think it was either Oxford or Cambridge, I can't remember. That's how they'd all met. And they were, they were just instantly that kind of snobby English group of people. And they were meant to be like that. And kind of the whole kind of Agatha Christie type thing to do is that all of the people in the book are kind of dislikeable. Is that a word? Um, so you don't really know who the murderer is but in turn by doing that you don't actually care when any of them dies so I was kind of apathetic about who was going to die and the way she did it was quite clever because you know from the start one of the group has died but you don't know which one it is until pretty much right at the end but I knew which one it was about halfway through I'd guessed I'd also a third of the about a third of the way through guess who the killer was and I never do that I'm useless at doing it on crime things that I watch on tv I'm definitely useless at doing it in books so I have no idea was it, was it just chance or was it that obvious uh, I don't want to discuss the plot and ruin things too much but maybe you could like private message me on Instagram if you had a similar thing maybe don't put it in the comments underneath in case you spoil it for anyone else but message me in a different way um so that ruined it but the thing that made me laugh all the way through at the beginning in an annoyed way but then towards the end I just found it funny was this idea of the Scottish wilderness oh my god did you know it was set in a remote location did you know that there are no people around for miles and it was just like it was so heavily done and heavy-handedly done that's not right and I read this with a friend and she said exactly the same she was like oh my god if I'd read another comment about it being in the wilderness and I was like I know and one of the characters actually gets out of the car um, the, the, I think uh, they're picked up by a Land Rover at this remote train station um, and, and he's like oh, I didn't even know places like this existed yes you did you've got a TV like I don't, I've never been to the Arctic but I know it exists you know I just don't understand even Londoners must know that Scotland exists and the wilderness I mean they must and I don't even you know, I don't want this whole video to be about me ranting, but they just, it's the classic thing of an emptied landscape, you know, it's not London, so therefore it's just nothing, and there's no community, there's just these randoms who are working on this um, hunting estate, and they've come from other places, you know, because only damaged people would end up working somewhere that remote, which I think when, I've not lived in Scotland, but I've lived in Wales, and I've lived in a pretty remote part of Wales, and like, just because the houses aren't next door to each other, it doesn't mean there's no community. If anything, you, you've got a bigger sense of community because they are essential to you. Like if you get snowed in or if you have an accident, they're the people that are going to come and help you. So even on a huge Scottish estate, I find it really hard to believe that there was just nobody local around. I think there's one, yeah, there's one local, but the, 
I think one of the gardener, I don't know what he is. He's the only one who's described as being local. So to me, like, I kind of feel like this was maybe like an in English response to um, Scottish independence because it just kind of read as this terrified sort of, I don't know, this, this terrified fear, knee-jerk response to Scotland and its its landscape. I, you know, I enjoyed it in that respect. I feel like there's a PhD in picking that book apart if anyone's willing to do it. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't really like it. And then I read, um, I sort of went a bit easy on myself and I read What We See in the Stars by Kelsey Oseed, or Oseid. And um, hopefully, because I'm doing an extreme close-up for this video, you'll be able to see how pretty this book is. So she's stuck to kind of a limited colour palette. And she's done all the stars, um, the stars that we know that are, some of them obviously connected to star signs and others are just um, things like Ursa Major, um, Virgo, all that kind of stuff. I don't know if you can see. It's gorgeous. And I learnt loads from it as well. I found it really interesting. She's done loads of other, other books. Um, I think she's illustrated children's books as well. And I now follow her on Instagram and she's really interesting. So that was lovely. My sister got me that for Christmas. So thank you. Um, then it, to end the video, because these are the last two books that I'm going to talk about for this segment, um, I read, what order did I read them in? I read Territory of Light by Yuko Tsushima, and I read Child of Fortune by Yuko Tsushima. I had these for Christmas, and it was one of those Christmas gifts that came off my wish list, which is now gone, because I've deleted my Amazon wish list, and I rely entirely on my Hive wish, wish list now. But my Amazon wish list, because you can just keep adding to it, it's like decades long and it's a bit ridiculous. So I, oh, that's not right. I'd almost forgotten that I had these um, on there and then my mum got them for me and uh, I thought, do you know what? Almost the passion for reading these has gone and if I put them on the shelf, that spells doom for them for eternity. So I read, and I thought they are only slim, so I thought I'll give Territory of Light a go. I loved it. They both I feel like these books go together. They, they don't really, but they, they feel like they do. So they're, they've been described as autofiction in the sense that they are very, they appear very autobiographical. And certainly I feel like some of the scenes are just too vivid to have been imagined. And that might be discrediting the author, but there's a scene, for example, in, I can't remember which, in Territory of Light, I think it's in, where the little two or three year old and becomes really interested in her mother's breasts and asks if she can have a drink of the milk like she used to. And the mother like playfully laughs along and lets her have a go at getting milk out and obviously she can't. And I just feel like that's something so personal and beautiful and something I don't think a lot of people could imagine that you would even do. Certainly before I had children, I can't imagine letting a three-year-old child do that. But when it's your child, it's totally different. And I, yeah, it just seemed so... Um, yeah, just really delightful to have this personal scene given to us in the form of a fictional scene. But the, they're both concerning women who are separated from their partners and are going through divorces. And from what I can tell from Japanese society, and bearing in mind I know virtually zip, um, this is very, very controversial, way more controversial than it is here in the UK. And these women are being judged. They're the ones who are being judged. The men are not. Men are the ones who've instigated it in both examples. But the women are the ones that are being made to suffer and being told by everybody from literally their own family to like their nurse, the nursery school people that their children are at, that they need to get back with their husbands because it's just not right. It's just not going to be right for the child. These women are trying to navigate this. You know, their husbands have basically left them and they're trying to navigate life. In the first one, the daughter is about two or three. And in the second one, I think she's about 10 or 11. 11, yeah. So it's almost like you're following that mother later on then in the second. And I'm so glad I chose to dive into the second straight away. I thought, is it too much to read two together? And I don't think I've read an author back to back since my PhD. I, and I, before that, I can't think of any time I've ever done that. I've always bought their books when I've enjoyed an author and intended to read more, but I tend to stagnate then and just let them sit on the shelf and I want to try something else. You know, I've got to move on and try something new. This was awesome reading these two back to back. And I can't really describe how beautiful her prose is. The imagery, especially in the first one, the imagery of all these lights and all of the chapters end in this really beautiful, magical way. And then in this one, the sort of the descriptions of the natural world and descriptions of her inner world there's no kind of spoon feeding going on like when characters are depressed there's nothing in there that says this character is depressed you just have to 
you know, read between the lines that there's a reason why this character isn't waking up and there's a reason why this character isn't washing anymore. And, you, you know, she doesn't even let the other characters clarify why that is. It's up to you to get it. And, you know, hopefully you would. So I just can't recommend these enough. It really gave me an insight into Japanese society and, and sort of any kind of feminism there would be different to here. So yeah, I really enjoyed them. And I've looked up to see if she's got any other stuff that I can get translated. These were translated by the way, Child of Fortune is translated by Geraldine Harcourt. Ah, and she does Territory of Light too. So maybe that's why these two went together really well. There's a smaller one I can get um, in the Penguin series, which I think I'll order. I think it's like a couple of quid. That's it. So the next video, I've also got one that is really, like, I don't think I'll be doing anything too controversial, controversial with my hunting party one. I think you all have expected me to give that a negative review. Um, that's just how I roll. But there's another one I've read, which is a bit, mm -mm, but then it came out okay in the end. And I've got some nature ones. So yeah, hopefully I will catch up with you soon. I hope you've had a lovely reading week. Let me know how your January has gone. Let me know if you've read any of those or um, if there's anything else that you've come across that you want to chat to me about, go for it. Okay, I'll see you soon.